Hey, and welcome to this week's podcast. So this week we're going to talk about class party time, when you're asked to bring a plate of food and how to do that whole food style. Yeah. So George has got loads of tips. Yes, I have. (laughs) Um, We're definitely approaching that time of the year where class parties begin Mm. and you're sent home a note saying... (laughs) Please provide. Well, probably an email now. Yeah, oh, I was going to say it isn't gone. How like I'm so stuck in the 1990s. Um, yeah, but yeah, you're asked. You know, yeah, can you bring a plate to school? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, or maybe you've got older kids and they just come home and grunt at you that they've got to take <laughs> yeah. something to school next week. Yeah. And uh, you know, you I know for myself as um, as a a parent. I've always felt really conflicted, particularly when my mm. kids were little, because it's like, well, I don't want them to go to school and just eat a load of rubbish. So maybe yeah. I need to lead by example and yeah. send something healthy. But look, it's not as simple as that, mm. I don't think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to discuss some ideas with you. Mm. Um, I definitely found that when my kids in their earlier years of school I would bake, my go-to was this carrot cake slice um, mm-hmm. that I'd take to school. Mm-hmm. But, you know, after a couple of years, um, my kids began, like they were fine with it when they were really little. Mm-hmm. But after a little while, they began to realise that their food wasn't touched by anyone but maybe a few teachers. Mm-hmm. So, and, mm-hmm. you know, I can remember my son coming home and saying, Mum, I love your carrot cake. Mm-hmm. But, um, and the teachers really loved it as well, but the kids only wanted the stuff, you know, the other stuff Mm. and stuff that was in packets and stuff like that. Mm. And they were disappointed because they wanted, you know, they come home with like half a container of the food that I'd kind of sent. So, you know, I suppose at that point, I personally had a bit of a hard think about um, what the plate was going to be, what the bringer plate was going to be. Because it is important to me that my kids have a really health, healthy relationship with food and they develop good memories around food mm-hmm. as well. And, you know, I, as I said, completely understand that sometimes as a parent it's tempting to just give up mm. and just, you know, admit to, bless you. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I yep. blessed you before the, the sneeze came. Um, yeah, and, you know, that they have a healthy relationship with food and, yeah, I, I understand it's it's it, like sometimes you just feel like just giving up and saying, you yeah. know what, just take the rubbish, you yeah. know, that you want yeah. to school, you know, under time pressure. I've definitely conceded to them taking some more good quality packet foods, which yeah. I'm going to tell you about in a moment. Mm. Um But on the whole, you know, rather than giving up entirely, I've just tried to make concessions. Like if we make a cake, I'll choose a popular flavour like chocolate and then I'll always add icing because that guarantees that it's going to be devoured. (laughs) Um, That is definitely a a turning point. You know, look, I might sneak some grated vegetables into the chocolate cake sometimes. Um, But, you know, generally I try and make something that's additive free and, you know, Mm. it's going to be a whole lot better than yeah, something that's been bought from a supermarket. Um, you know, as my kids kind of got older, they liked taking things like sushi or mm. even sausage rolls. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, as I said, when they got much older, well, it was hard to kind of judge because you just mm. get a heap of grunts. Of like, <laughs> very you know, true. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, look, I try to make allowances definitely when it comes to um, – to sharing food and, you know, to getting, as I said, supporting my kids to develop good food memories and, Mm. yeah, you know, yeah. A consideration for me too, like I've always loved the environment. Yep. And just packets. Yes. You know, and plastic and yeah, like, and it it can, it used to feel a bit challenging, you Mm. know, with, with when all the other kids around my kids were bringing packeted, stuff yes but for me that was another consideration one yeah. health and the second thing was yes. the environment and yeah. then where's all this plastic going absolutely yeah yeah absolutely um one, one thing I just wanted to just kind of regress a little bit with and just discuss you know is the fact that in times gone by you know food acquisition mm. was actually very much a group effort it was shared amongst the village mm. or you know amongst the tribe 
And I do believe there's something really special about sharing food with other people. I agree. Yeah. I, I think, think it's, of camping. Yeah, absolutely. When you all get yeah, together yeah. and help around You know, the it's campfire. bonding. It it's is. educational. It's relaxing. Totally. Yeah. And um, I think it teaches kids a lot mm. about cooperation, about fairness. Mm. You know, I always used to discuss with my kids, um, you know, when they were headed to a you know, a table full of food and they started scoffing themselves that, you know, that, that they need to be considerate of other mm. people and yeah. and leaving enough food for, for one yep. of their friends. So if, everyone can have a taste. Totally, yep. you know, because yep. if they ate three cupcakes, that meant that, you know, other kids were going to miss out. Yeah. Um, and there's actually a really interesting Belgian study that I found that found that um, – People who shared meals more frequently or kids that shared more meals frequently when they were little mm. scored better for altruistic behaviours, like mm. particularly giving directions to strangers, mm. offering seats on public transport and actually helping their friends kind of move house or volunteering. Mm. And, you know, these are incredible traits to instil in your kids. So, again, there's there's a lot to be said for sharing food and what we're finding more and more with mm. mental health is yep. that helping others yes. has a massive impact on your mental health yes. it's actually really important yeah so that's, so that's the not a light effect, thing isn't it? Yeah, yeah yeah and that often people that don't help others and aren't involved in kind of um noticing how they can be of benefit to yep. someone else they're more likely to get depression yeah, or, interesting yeah we need each other yeah and absolutely. we need to feel needed by yeah, each other yeah absolutely Community. so you know yeah. as much as the bring a plate idea sometimes as I said used to upset me because yeah. <laughs> I knew that my kids would just be eating a whole heap of food I didn't want them to eat yeah. there are some really incredible benefits for sharing food and for having that kind of group effort in and and eating together and um yeah and just not just, you know, I think nowadays our Western food culture is very much targeted at everything being in individual portions yeah. like snack meals and happy meals and things like that yeah. where we're not sharing um, meals and, you know, or many. Tasting different things. Totally, hey, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, you've gone to a restaurant and there's kids' meals and, like, everyone, I mean, I'm loving that now more restaurants are, are definitely leaning more towards that shared style mm. of food, mm. which is great, but... Um, you know, we know in many parts of the world that um, there are cultures where they they really the the heart of their culture is sharing with yeah. food and food with friends and family, and and kids don't tend to have the same degree of food fussiness and mm. eating disorders yeah. and those I, kinds of things. So, definitely, yeah. I think of one of Jack's mates, yeah. best one of Jack's best friends when he was young was um, Greek Italian. Yes. And Jack would try like and come home and say, Mum, can you get some dolmatas? And yep. and he cooks a lot of the things that he does, like the way he adds things to his steak is from what he learned. Yeah. Going from and that sharing yes. their food and, yes. and helping Tasting make tomato sauce. Yeah. Because they would have days where they made food. Yes. And even swapping food at lunch times. Yep. And I know they they're not right. supposed to do yes. that. Yes. Gosh. But I mean, I think that's that's with this bring a plate. Yes. It, it's it could be an amazing thing. It really can. You know, because you can chat you can try different flavours and yep. see how you feel after different things. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I mean that's something we've already spoken about. But even though, you know, the chances are your kids are gonna eat foods that you don't want them to eat mm. and that are perhaps not gonna make them feel particularly good. Yeah. There are learning experiences in that as well. Totally. So you, I think for, you know, in the case of these bring a plate days, you need to let go, mm. get into the spirit of the event. Yeah. And, um, and, but I also do still firmly believe that leading by example is also really important. I agree. So I agree. yeah, like I said, for me, I wouldn't buy a cake from the supermarket. I would make one and I'd get the kids involved yeah. in actually um, doing that. And, you know, instead of just, you know, grabbing a packet of biscuits or chips on the way to school, yeah. um, which look, I've done, yeah. I'm definitely guilty of that. Yeah. I have absolutely done that, especially through the teen years where yeah. I get told about the bring a plate day, like on the morning yeah. of the event, <laughs> basically. Oh, kids are funny. oh, I know it drives me crazy. Cause I'm like, oh, I could have made something really nice, but now I'm just grabbing a, a bag of chips on the way. Um, but you know, like kids when they're little, especially they love to, you know, tell their teachers that they helped make the cake or yes. make the sausage rolls. So yes. again, it's another opportunity for you to invite your kids to get involved. Yeah. Um, 
if go ahead sorry I was going to say for me um uh, like I we would always I'd do watermelon or yes. uh, grapes or strawberries yeah absolutely or, that's definitely an mm. option I know as my kids have got older they've been directed like it's like some kids are on fruit some yes. kids are on other yes. things so yeah. you know obviously fruit's the easy thing yes it was. um but yeah you know look baking you know you've obviously got a lot of different treats that you have um that you can bake that you know the well nourished website has loads and loads of um recipes to choose from mm. things like meatballs or sausage rolls are always yeah. a hit as well and like you said fruit platters yeah. one of the things I sometimes or I got into the habit of doing when my kids were little little um we called watermelon pizza yeah so I would slice the um, pizza cool. into try the pizza the watermelon into triangles yeah. and then just put a little bit of yogurt on top and then the kids would decorate it with berries for Great example idea. so yeah. that was the pizza the watermelon yeah. pizza Obviously, sushi is another option. Mm. Um, popcorn is quick, easy, budget friendly, and yeah. you can make it yourself. It's so easy to mm. make. Um, pizza as well, like you can even just use wrap bases. Yeah. Um, we used to do that. We yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, a bit of, you know, tomato paste on top yeah. and then, you know, top it with the toppings that you think the kids are going to like. Yeah. You know, dips are always um, a good idea as well if, you know, with some crackers and maybe some mm. raw carrot or something like that. Yeah. Um, if they do want to specifically take a packet, there were definitely ages and stages with my kids where it was really important for them to fit in. Yeah, yeah. And to yeah. feel like they weren't the one with the, you know, the carrot sticks in the dip for exactly. Yeah, 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 they're actually coming in with with a packet and that made them feel cool and part of the kind of pack. Mm -hmm. um, the things that I personally used to try and choose were plain chips, mm -hmm. so nothing heavily flavoured because that's where all of the nasty additives tend to come in. These days you can actually buy chips that are cooked in olive oil or avocado oil, yes, which yeah. are incredible, although mm -hmm. they're still expensive, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, there are brands of popcorn as well or store-bought popcorn that aren't too bad. Mm -hmm. Um, table of plenty chocolate, those chocolate rice crackers yep. are good as yep. well. Yep. So My we kids have like them too. <clears throat> yeah, we do have, you know, more options these days, definitely than when my kids were little. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just trying to pick the least like, like the most additive friendly I suppose option mm. was always my goal mm. um there are as I said more and more things like lollies and things that are on the market that um yeah that that don't have so many nasties and stuff in there so yeah for me the take-home message really is um to embrace the bring a plate yes idea yeah to work with your kids yeah. and the stage or phase that they're in as I said when my kids were really little they loved the whole baking mm. making something with me and taking it yes. to school as they got yeah. older this was less um uh, less kind of attractive mm. for them so we did occasionally do the packet thing yeah um, as they've gotten older again, I think in these teen years, they actually really love to take something that we've made as well. Yeah. So it's funny how they kind of it's like that, go in swings and circles. It is. It's like that time just before they're teenagers and their early teens yep. where they're desperate to fit in. Totally. And they're desperate to kind of um, come across in a certain way. Yeah. And then like grade 11 and 12 they don't yeah. care as much no. anymore which is so it liberating is, is and so great yeah. in fact it's even I've really found with both of my kids in those older age groups it's actually really cool to be healthy yeah totally. um, you know a lot of them follow people on social media who advocate great health messaging which yes. um, makes our so lives good, a lot easier it? it's awesome yeah and yeah it's not uncommon for my son to send me recipes now and say hey yeah. we need to make this or <laughs> yeah. um yeah yeah exactly right. yeah he actually he said to me um this week we've been watching an NFL show like a documentary mm -hmm. And, you know, they obviously make massive amounts of money and one mm. of the guys has a chef because he um, loves eating junk food oh. but he knows how important it is for him to eat good food yeah. so he's just hired a chef because that way he always eats really good food. Yeah. And Jesse actually said to me a couple of mornings ago, God, imagine what it would be like just to have someone cooking your meals every <laughs> night for you. I looked at him and said, hang on a minute. <laughs> That, that's exactly what I do for you. <laughs> like you do have someone that cooks your meals every night. He's yeah. like, 
oh, yeah, no, I know, Mum, I know you're a really good cook and everything, but this guy's got a chef. <laughs> I was like, mm, okay, thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully this has alleviated some of your stress mm. um, around the bring a plate idea mm. and, um, yeah, and next time you're asked to bring a plate, you won't – Feel the dread that mm. sometimes comes with bringing a plate and you can, yeah, work with your kids and, and find those kind of teaching opportunities and those golden moments. Mm. 